Hello and welcome to today's episode of Coffee with Bobby. Today I am joined with Drew Southern. Drew grew up in the arts with a mother who painted and decorated the house with her paintings to a father who worked in book publishing for over 20 years and adored his poetry. Drew was surrounded by the arts from a young age. He made his short film at 16, started playing guitar at 21, and now in his early 30s, Drew has played in a dozen bands, playing shows from California to Toronto. He has made tons of shorts with over 3 million combined YouTube views and hundreds of recordings on Spotify. And this is the just the beginning. He is getting started here. So welcome to the show today, Drew. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks for having me. So, yeah. How are you doing today? Doing good. Everything's good. Um, yeah. No. Uh, I'm in California. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, everything weather's you know kind of fall some days here. Sometimes it's a little kind of hot. Um, I'm in. I'm full in it. Writing my second screenplay right now. So that's kind of uh, the mornings is what I'm in. It. I'm in it. I'm, I'm on. You know, just uh, 40 pages into the set into this thing and. Yeah, so everything's good, man. Just grooving, flowing, you know, living life. I'm, I'm happy. Ooh, that's awesome. I love to hear it. So you mentioned that you're working on a new screenplay. Is this yeah. going to be like another short that you, no, so from your bio? A, yeah, no, well, uh, act, well um, this one's a feature. I'm working, it's my second feature. I finished my first feature uh, just in the last year basically. Um, and uh, that first one's called Vibe Lords. It's a sci-fi fantasy. Um, it's an animated feature, which is interesting. And uh, but this one, this is my second one. It's called Only in LA. And it's a much more gritty, raw, um, uh, you know, dramatic, you know, film. And uh, it's about a dude from Montana that grows up in kind of an isolated family. A mom's not there. Dad's very emotionally distant. He grows up hunting and, and all that stuff. And uh, he's very ambitious. Uh, he, he, what he does for work in Montana is, is shoot like big game, like bears and elk illegally and sells them. So it's kind of like a weird thing he does. And, but he, you know, he, he's obsessed with old Westerns and like Paul Newman and all the old classic Hollywood. So he moves to LA to be an actor. But the first day he gets to LA, he meets, um, this mega hustler, drug dealer, pimp, just black market seedy dude who basically kind of brings him into that world because, you know, this kid doesn't know anybody, doesn't know anything. He's naive, he's inexperienced, and he needs money. Um, and so he gets into that and he almost gets too deep before he has to finally, you know, get out. And at the very end, after all this crazy roller coaster ride through the black market world, ends up going on his first audition at the very end of the movie. Um, Ooh. To, yeah. so it's uh yeah it's good I'm I, I got the whole story I'm writing it uh you know it's just day by day you know I get anywhere from three pages on a really really slow day to six pages to up to 12 pages a day when I'm really cranking mm -hmm. uh because uh I, you know and yeah I'm just gonna write it till it's done and then you know hopefully shop it around or see what's up and move on to the next thing Right. So the goals with this, are you wanting to do like independent production film of this or have you worked with other larger productions to get this out and about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any and all of the above. Um, I mean, ultimately, it's like work. I think this one is this is, yeah, hopefully more of an indie kind of thing and a small production company. Maybe, you know, some up and coming director who likes the gritty raw LA real, sh you know, stuff. There's a lot of like street stuff and just stuff about, you know, I don't know. It's got like, you know, you know, like the old Michael Mann documentary where you use natural lighting and LA. Yep. It's just that all well, that. So, so, you know, if I find a director like that or a production company like that, that is into that kind of thing, then yeah, those are the people I'm looking forward to collab and shop it to or whatever, you know. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, yeah, I think it's definitely an indie one. It, it shouldn't, it's not like a, it's not like a Superman Marvel thing. You know, it's an indie, indie guy. Uh, there's an interesting blend of tones in it too. You know, it's, it's definitely an indie, indie, indie kind of flavor. So that's the goal. That's the goal. I mean, if we can get, a, if I can find a production company that, that like, that really likes the script and wants to make it, that'd be a dream, you know, but you know, I can only control so much. I just write the best story I can and, um, and then go from there. And, but, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's basically, my, that's how I kind of see the process, you know. Ooh, that's awesome. I, 
that storyline seems so captivating like throughout all of my travels and you know you travel across the country and you drive through Wyoming I haven't really driven through Montana but it's that same sort of vibe so I can picture you know everything happening and then somebody who goes to LA and everything like that like I've lived in LA I lived in Santa Barbara so I get the feel of it and I'm like ooh, this could be really really good like a thriller style so thanks no it actually it, 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 exactly I mean because you know I think you can probably to any I you know if anybody that moves to a big city you know the big a big city can kick your kick your butt you know what I mean like you know there's, there's all kinds of people there's all kinds of stuff and all kinds of things it's just you know big um there, there's, you know, if you come especially from a small town, you know, you can just imagine like, uh, there's a little more simplicity, maybe a little more trust. And sometimes now there's scammers, you know what I mean? There's people, there's people robbing people. There's, there's all kinds of shit. Right. On that. It, can, it can feel like the wild, wild west. When you look at it through a certain lens, you know, when you take time to explore that stuff, it can be stuff that a lot of people don't want to look at. Right. Right. Uh, and yeah. You know, um, it, it's, uh, so I can, that's what I'm exploring. I'm exploring like, what if you take a naive person and really put them in a really difficult situation? And uh, and it's interesting, you know, it's just a cool, these these screenplays are like kind of like thought experiments, you know, you're exploring exploring stuff. And and um, so, I mean, I don't know what your, your experience like was in LA, but I've definitely, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, I will tell you this. I grew up in a small town um, and rural area, Indiana. And, you know, it might not be going hunting big game and things like that, but the largest thing in town that came when I was in high school was a super Walmart. And I, let me tell you what, that changed life in this town. Yeah. Uh, then I went from that to like picking up three years later and moving to Barcelona, Spain, and then right. moving from there to other large cities and traveling. And it does, it brings this element back of like, you gotta learn the ropes of, you know, not everybody's gonna help you. Like if you have a flat tire or whatnot, you're like on your own. And tr yeah. like you said, trying not to get scammed or seeing what's gonna happen to you. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I think one of the first things happened to me when I was in LA, I pulled up to a gas station, got gas and it was like a swiper thing on the card and somebody stole my information. Next thing you know, there's like sunglass hut purchases in Vegas for like hundreds oh, of dollars. No. Yeah. You know, like, so like, and like, so sometimes for me, the way my, I'm kind of, you know, into weird shit, I guess. So I start to think like, what is the psychology of that guy that like sets up that machine and does that scam? You know, like that's a, I mean, that's messed up. You know, when I have, I was mad. I was mad when that happened to me and like this guy, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, that's the fun thing exploring uh, about movies, you know, um, Bobby, is that like, you're exploring people that are very different than yourself. And that's really, really fun. It's really fun to get out of your head and explore other people. Like I noticed like the psychology of the characters in the, in my sh the movie I write, are, it's nothing like me. They're making decisions that I just wouldn't make, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it, <laughs> you know, and and that's what, it's fun though. That's what it, it's, 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 it's like, it's fun to, 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 it's cool to have that self-awareness, you know, of like, I think it takes a lot of self-awareness, you know, to, and, and humility. Uh, like, yeah, like the, the, to, to, write about people that may be more courageous than you, honestly, if like, you know, or, or, or le the less courageous, less moral than you, you know, more, you know what I mean? Like in, in all these things that um, I think that's what's, it's, it's, it's like a, a thing I've realized over the, I think when I wrote a lot in my twenties, it was all me. It was every character was me, you know? And now as I get older and return, I see a lot of different people. I'm recognizing things that I am and things that I'm not. And that's what opens up the, 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 the writing to make characters that are interesting because it's, it's not me, you know, these characters are, <laughs> you know. They're completely but, different people yeah. that you yeah. probably yeah. would never be. Yeah, exactly, exactly. How so, do you find, oh, yeah. sorry to interrupt, no, no, go no, ahead. No, 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 please, please, go. Uh, okay, so I was gonna say, how do you find character development for you? Like, do you yeah. study other characters from other films and other, um, you know, TV shows? Or do you find people in real life? Like I know before we went live, we were talking a little bit about the coffee shop scene and people watching. Yeah. How do you find that character 
character development for yourself? I'm, I'm obsessed with people and, and, and like in a way I wish I wasn't. I, I have a memory that things, I can remember the littlest details and they'll stick in my head. And so I listen, I, I think it it's all comes from real people. Like the character Jake in the movie I'm writing now, I uh, met this guy at, the box, at a boxing gym I go to. Um, before the whole lockdown thing happened in LA and uh, and we went and got coffee and I'm just talking, he's an act, he, he's pursuing acting in LA. He think he got on some Netflix thing, he's got a manager, he's trying to figure it out, but he's, you know, he's going through some ups and downs and he's just an interesting guy. He's got like blonde hair and these blue eyes. He kind of, you know, I'm, I talk really fast and I like to get ideas and go down rabbit holes yep. and, go and, and he's just like slow country boy, you know? <laughs> and like, and I just love that. I'm like, you're so not me. Like, <laughs> So I, he was just inspired the whole thing. I'm like, what if I put a guy like that? And then so I worked in the studio downtown in LA and I saw some of the, like some, just these guys, I mean, you know, like rappers and shit and you know, they got a bunch of money and they don't work nine to five. So you put the math together, you know? <laughs> right. And, um, uh, and I was like, dude, it's just interesting. And like, he's like this non-judgment place. I just love him. I love it. I love people. I love talking, you know? listening, letting people just talk and tell the stories. I, I you know, I can, I, you know, at the coffee shop, I, I get enraptured and somebody's talking about them and learning all the details about them. And so I think eventually when you're talking to people and you, you, your mind starts playing these games, like, well, what if I put that person with this person? And what if that, ha you just all this what if game, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and all this, and it starts spiraling. And then the you know, next thing you know, it's like, I have to write the movie. You know what I mean? I, I'm at this point now where it's like, I mean, there's other things I kind of rather do, but I, I'm going to write this movie today. <laughs> like, I'm just going to keep turning it out because it's like I have enough of it going, enough momentum with the story is, is just going to, I just got to tell the story and put it down. And, but yeah, to answer your question, it's definitely real life. It's definitely talking. It's definitely witnessing. It's a, it's a testimony, you know, of like I saw this person was like this and I remember that and this person was like that. And that was kind of, you know, it's total witness, you know, situation. Yeah. And those are the moments that truly make life Fuller, I believe I'm the same as you like I meet people everywhere I even have to tell you know people that I travel with if I go with new friends places or colleagues when we're on the road like FYI be prepared I'm gonna make tons of friends just <laughs> just watch out like you know surprises will happen that we're not even planning for so I get that and what you mentioned of you know you have all the characters, you have this idea and that you would probably rather do something else, but you know deep down that this is what you're meant to do right now. And you've got to grind it out and just do the work. How have yeah. you, how did you sort of navigate that? Cause that's one of those things that as a creative that you're yeah. always toying with, like I could be making money if I go to this, but I know deep down I need yeah. to do this to pursue that so i think uh lots of failure and lots and time you know is like because i'm at the point now i started writing i wrote my first like you know short and you know first piece of in screenplay i started writing the screenplay format in uh 2008 you know so it's 2020 i mean like if i'm i just if i'm still doing it it's like i i you know i guess the point is like man i might as well make this really fucking quality you know and like and, and, you know, I think uh, just a raw honesty, you know, it comes to a point like, like when I, when I write, I, I try, I am, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of how I'm feeling. And if I'm not feeling like I'm watching a movie that I'd like to watch, I stop, you know, and, but I'm going to write. So <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? There's yeah. like a, so you better find a way to feel good about what you're writing. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to put your heart into it. You got to put your soul into it. Because at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, like it's got your name on it. It's yeah, yeah. yours. It's like your baby that you've worked on for years. So this isn't a, you know, I'm going to turn this out in six months. And it's, oh, no, it's, a, it's a great point. Like, you know, I, 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 you know, I think a lot of stuff I used to write, I used to, I used to be very meticulous about, coming up with all these uh, like these these cards to, to, to get all the scenes organized and I just spend a little bit day on each of these cards and I go through these books and all these processes and I try to do everything like the right way and then I finish the thing and it'd be like I wouldn't even feel that great about it or whatever you know and like and I'm like man you know ultimately what are you trying to do here ultimately you're trying to tell a story that is going to 
you know, basically be freaking entertaining for, to people. So, you know, let's just do that. Like, <laughs> so, right. and, 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 and basically my process has really taken a step back from all these, like, you know, systems and rules and schedules. And some of my writing days, before I'm writing now, I'm in the process of writing this thing. But perhaps some, so, you know, when I'm do, I, I think a lot about the story before I write. That's what I do now. So, because I want to get, I want to like, you can't tell a story unless you know it. I'm sure you could tell a story about your, your, like, you know, anything. Like somebody could tell a story about the first, the day they lost their virginity or the day they got married or like some important thing in their life. They know what happened. They were there. So they can tell you what happened. It's like, they're able to tell you the story. If you don't know the story, you can't, you can't tell it. So, so now it's like, I, some some of my days, I literally instead of going to the keyboard and just writing because I'm supposed to or doing my note cards, I'm supposed to. I'll smoke a joint, lie on my couch, and just like visualize the movie, you know. Yep. And then you know what I'm saying. So it's like doing what what organically feels right in the moment to do to get you where you need to go. Um, and then I, you know that's I mean this is a long story about my process, but that's the the beginning part. When I get to the writing, which I'm at now, that's a little bit more of the like, okay, you're just gonna sit down and you're gonna crank because it's like. Again, I've experienced my wedding or whatever it's a significant event, mm -hmm. and I just need to fucking tell it now, you know. And I'm at that point. But um, yeah, when when I'm sitting down though, it's got to feel good. I gotta like what I'm doing. If I don't, I stop. I take my dog on a walk. You know what I mean? I do something else because um, there's no happy endings to unhappy journeys. You have to enjoy the. Pro you have to enjoy your work. If you're not enjoying it, just stop. You know? Because like, look, I mean, I'm, to be honest, it's like I'm not getting paid for this. I'm doing this from my heart. You know what I mean? So right. if you're not in it, then what, what are you doing? You know? Um, so that's, that's, um, yeah, that's the biggest thing for me. You know, it's, uh, it's, you know, yes, there is an element of grinded out. And I do believe of like, you know, Stephen King talks about writing. It's like, he, he equates as a, like the janitor sweeping, like part of his job is just, he just sweeps. That's his job, you know? So, you know, so you can think of it as lofty thing of, as a writer, or you could just think of it as like, just as basic as any job, like sweeping, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I agree with that. So part of me is just like, you know, sit down and go. But when I'm going, you know, I, I do what I got to do to enjoy what I'm you know, I'm writing because it's got, you know, you know, I think that the, one, the, the frustration comes, Bobby, is like, you, I know the story and writing it is slower than watching it, you know? Like, you and have to, you, you, yeah, it's like it's like watching it in slow motion, and so that you like can I just put it on Netflix already and press play? It's like no, because it doesn't exist. Yet. You gotta, yeah. And I know this from one of my good friends who's also into screenwriting, and there's like so many details that the viewers never see that goes into screenwriting, like character A turns the corner or picks up said coffee cup as they're speaking. And those are things that you don't think of, but have to be there to tell the yeah. story. And like you said, like you have to have those days of where you've learned, like if you just keep writing, like where's the story going until you actually experience it. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like that's so key in like whatever art form that you do. Absolutely. If you if it's not in you and you don't know it, you can't share it. You can't give it. You know, you have to. It has to be yours to give. You know, if it's the song, you need to know it. If it's the painting, you need to see it first. If it's the writing, you need. To, you're the first reader. You know, you need to. You need to know this. You need to know it before you can share it. You know. Um, so yeah. I love it. I love how you stated that. How did you find out? You know, you admitted like before you would try to go buy the books. Right. What made you turn and say, you know what, I'm going to do it my way because I know I have a feeling that that's going to actually connect with the way that I create. That's a great question. You know, yeah, that's a fantastic question. I think the thing that hit me is uh, I, I, over the last couple of months, I've done a really self audit process, a deep dive. And like, you know, I think people don't really want to look at their own weaknesses. And I've been really looking at my own weaknesses in a really critical way. And uh, that's really tough, but the, you know, and it's been hard, but the interesting thing is that it's blossoming in the writing side of it because of the honesty that comes from it. Um, so to your question of how you can do it your way versus these books, I think it really just comes down to like, look, it's, it's, you know, if you, you know, I, I 
if you're going to have a, a screenplay that you want, you know, somebody to put millions of dollars around and have all these actors show up and, 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 and make it and all the performances and the edit and market and, and convince all these people to spend an hour and a half of their day, go to the theater, if the theater's open again, or the stream it or whatever, it's got to be a really freaking good story. You know, it's got to just be real quality. And like, there's all these other stories already out there that you could, there's plenty of movies already on Netflix. There's like, if you read, I mean, there's, you go all the way back to like Shakespeare or like the Odyssey or the freaking, there's, there's, you go thousands of, there's so much good stories. of So it's like, it's just an element of like, dang, like I need to dig deeper on the whole honesty realm to really find something that's actually valuable in the canon of stories that are out there, right? Yep. And when you're doing yep. that, it's like this freaking book process isn't like bullshit. Like, <laughs> you know, like, like, cause, it, cause I'm just going deeper now, you know, all those book processes and stuff are great to get you started and learn the rules. And now it helps because there are rules and I'm following rules. Like around page 30, something should happen 55 and 75. And like, there's act one, two, and three and all those rules I agree with. And I do follow, they're like in me now. It's like music. It's like knowing, you know, a key oh i'm in this key it's like a real thing there's a c major key if somebody's playing a c major you're like okay i hear it it's c major got it so you know those rules but to answer your questions like you get to a point where it's like man i really want to make something that actually works that actually people really want to watch it's actually like in watching 10 years and 20 years you know and keep coming back to and that's just a whole deeper level of honesty and that just brings out more interesting things, you know, that just certain, you just start doing things differently when you start operating like that, you know, you just like start, I don't know, man, like, it's just, yeah. And you want to find something that resonates with yourself and that resonates with others. Yeah. And to your point, like there are thousands upon thousands of options that I could watch tonight on Netflix or on Hulu or whatever streaming, like what's going to make me choose your film over something else. And I think that's that honesty and connection to it and that you really take into account of like, I'm going to make this the greatest thing and share what's really on my heart today. Absolutely. I think that's, that's it. Yeah. That's it for sure. You know, to add the icing on cake to that, you know, cause I told you I was going to the boxing gym. Mm-hmm. And so I go to the boxing gym and I eventually start sparring. And the interesting thing about sparring, Bobby, is like when you're punching a punching bag, it's all fine and dandy. But when you're going against another person, like they punch you back. So <laughs> you start getting hit in the face and that's like, you're like, damn, there's nothing that focuses you more than getting hit in the freaking face. When somebody punches you in the face, you're like, okay, I'm here. I'm not anywhere else. Like I need to be here and this is important. <laughs> And I literally started doing this game in my head of like, all right, so say I have a screenplay. All right, great, Drew, congratulations, what you do? Yeah, you wrote a screenplay. You wanna get it made, you go to a meeting with a producer that can make your movie. He's like, I can finance it, $20 million, no problem. I write checks like that all the time. I need to make 10 movies a year, this is what I do. Or whatever, three movies a year, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's like a bo- treat that like a boxing match. Like, don't go in there unless you're ready to get like believe in every. You know, you, it's like you have to be like recognizing that if you don't totally have all the confidence in your preparation. Like, if you're a boxer, you prepared so hard because you just you want to be prepared for the punches and not get hit. Same with your screen. It's got to be so rock solid and so tight and just so such a good story that you would like die for it. So you can go in there and being like, I'm not afraid of getting punched in the face. I'm not because I believe in this so much that this story is just that damn good that like, I don't care what you think of me. You can not like Drew Southern, but you can't like, you got like, tell me what you think of this. This story is freaking amazing. You know what I mean? Yup. And, and yeah, yeah. Like when you own it and when you know it, it's like, here it is. Here's the best of the best. Like I've worked heart and soul on it. It is ready for the punches. Like. Yeah it's out there it's ready for the reviews you know sure there might be a couple of those that are criticisms of it as there is with any creative endeavor but when you're like this is the best that i've got today like here you go it's out there like that's an incredible feeling 
I think that's that's the goal. I mean, that's what you can control. You all you can control is like you really put a lot of passion into it. You put a lot of thought. You put a lot of energy. You really cared about every line. You cared about every scene. You cared about the characters. You really cared, and you really, you know, kind of you know sweated over it. You know, at the end of a good boxing match, they're driven in sweat. They're tired. They they really work for it. You know, and um, you know if you did that, you feel good about it you know uh, and uh you know it's like the, to use the box analogy like there's sometimes you cannot win but still feel really good you went 12 rounds with an amazing opponent and you just barely lost like that's not oh you know sometimes sometimes in in, in in you know boxing it's always such a win sport and if you do the win or you're 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 done and like the way they try to climb the ranks you lose and you drop right back to the bottom and you have to climb back up mm-hmm. but there's sometimes a boxing where you can lose and it can be like an honorable thing that came to boost your career. You can, you know, like, like look at Rocky, like in the movie Rocky, he doesn't win against Apollo Creed, but he doesn't get knocked down, you know, and he keeps going. Yeah. So um, I think, you, you know, there's something like, that's where the, the self reward comes in. It's really, really giving it your all and putting like just a tremendous amount of emotional energy and, and passion into your, into your work. Um, that's the process and flow I'm looking for in life. You know, where I just wake up, I do that, I do whatever else I do in the day, and then I'm stoked and I'm done, and like I'm glad that I'm, and I, and I you know, and the the fruits will come, whatever. But like you, you're you're just pr- proud of the watering and the and the energy you're giving to the thing that you care about. You know, that's, exactly. I think that's the sweet spot. Yeah. I mean, and with that analogy, like look at all those plants behind you. Like they didn't start out being this big. You know, they started out as like little itty bitty seedlings. And then all that watering keeps growing to become what they are today. And they're not even at that full maturity level. Oh, for sure. I think that's so true. I think there's an exponential thing to it, you know, and it's a weird thing, but you keep put, like pushing and, and breakthrough and the momentum and, and certain certain thing, time, it just comes to something bigger than what you can even see of it. You know, the cool thing about movies is we could watch the same movie and have totally different perspectives on it, you know, and see totally different things, you know? So, um, you know, there's, there's definitely a process when in any art where you just, you know, eventually you kind of cross this threshold and, 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 and people are just seeing all kinds of stuff in it that you never even realized was there. Um, and that's really cool too, you know, it's, um, yeah. Now that you mentioned art and all of its art forms, let's go back to like how you got started. And I mean, you grew up in a creative household. Your mom was an artist, your dad a writer and writing poetry. How did, so, so he, oh, go ahead. Actually, sorry, no, he, he was a book publisher. So he never, oh. he's never he, and that's the thing I always said, told him he should be, he never, he never writes anything. So he's so, he's like, he's, he's the guy behind the scenes. Gotcha, okay. Um, so cut you off, like he was, yeah. Yeah, but being in that creative atmosphere, how do you feel like that it shaped your life to allow you to pursue this creative lifestyle today? That's a great question. I mean, well, what's interesting is like, you know, my parents never really pushed the arts on me at all. You know, um, that's always been my kind of thing. And, uh, you know, um, my, my, they, I think that, you know, my mom, she, she painted a lot. But she has some like unfulfilled dreams, you know, she always really wanted to be this like painter, this bohemian with like all her paintings and have a galleries and shows. And, you know, she told me she did one show in New York and then like it didn't go so well. And she like never tried to do it again. And, and when she had me, she went into graphic design. And my dad, you know, he always wanted to be the tweed jacket wearing guy that would like recite poetry at a party with wine. And, you know, his intellectual. Yeah. He's, he's very like the armchair philosopher. He's very critical thinking. And uh, he, um, but eventually he got very jaded by the whole book publishing business and he went into commercial real estate, which he does now. So they've kind of like, you know, I don't know, they, they, oh, you know, growing up, I played sports a lot in school as a high school quarterback and like kind of a jock in high school. And, um, you know, the art has been interesting. I, it was always been kind of like on the, on the, on the back while I'm like, I'm doing other stuff. And, but I, like I said, I started making short films when I was 16 in high school and then in college, I, I really got into it. And, um, but yeah, they, they, they've never really like, they've always been very, you know, very hands off and very distant and, and on, on the whole art stuff. They kind of just, I just do my thing, you know? And, and at times when I was younger, I'd want them to like, 
you know, my dad said like a couple things to me about books and poetry. And I still remember them to this day. Like, you know, they said like two things to me and, uh, and I still remember it, but you know, so that's how we, he's, he's in his own world and, but he just really, you could, I just, you talk to him and he could tell he loves books, you know, mm -hmm. he's obsessed. So, and you know, I, I paint from time to time. I'll get these spurts where I'll just like go to Blick and get $600 of paints and, and, and crafts and just go ham and get some, and just, you know, make a bunch of stuff. And I'll show my mom and she'll have her commentary, you know, cause she's like, <laughs> um, but you know, and, and like, you know, but they, they really, so for me, you know, I don't know. It's like, it's just been a, it's just been like a calling or something in my head, something in me that it's a very real relationship, but that I've always, it's always just drawn me in, you know? And like, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's like, it's just, it keeps coming. Like no matter what I do or where I go in life, it, it, you know, it, I'm always just thinking about it. I'm thinking about, you know, thinking about movies, thinking about music. And I'm just so curious and fascinated by the whole thing that, um, yeah, you know, and I feel really good now because now I've like grown up a little bit. So I feel like I'm in a good headspace where, you know, I used to be, I think, bogged down by a lot of other people's opinions about me and stuff like that. And my, what my parents think, and, and now I just don't give a crap what anybody thinks. I'm really just doing what I think is the best thing to do. And what I think is stimulating, what I think is interesting. I put so many movies in this head and you can tell I talk a lot. I think a lot of critical thinking on all these, these movies and everything I've seen. And, and so now it's fun writing because I'm like ciphering all that data and just like using my, my, my standards to make a movie that I'd really want to see. And that's interesting because, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, I don't know, I feel good about it, one, which isn't good. And two, I'm curious to see what other people would actually gonna think, you know, because um, it's, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's like, I'm, uh, it's just the most honest, when you're redoing honest stuff, Bobby, it always just feels good, you know? I just, I just, just this is the truth I found. But, but anyway, long, long when it answer your question, I mean, yeah, for the parents, they were so standoffish, man. I was really, I did, I just kind of just choose, I decided to pick up guitar at 21 and neither of my parents played music and there was nobody in my family immediate that played music. And, you know, my sister played violin and growing up and I played a little bit and, uh, but then just put it down for sports. And at 21, I just got obsessed with the guitar and started playing six hours a day. So, you That's know, awesome. I, don't, I don't know what to say about that. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Well, I love it. I love how you just like dive into it and whatever you feel creatively to do. I can totally relate about picking up something different. I have done photography in the past and, you know, when I need that creative outlet, like I'm the same, like, okay, I'm going to go spend 200, $300 at Michael's and go buy a whole bunch of paint like buy epoxy resin. I went through a phase of that and it brings forth like so many other ideas. You get into this space of like, I just want to play yeah. and just, I need to let my mind go. I just need to play. And those other thoughts of like how you're going to do something for you, it would be like with screenwriting or, you know, for me now it's like motivational speaking or whatever the case may be, but having those outlets just let your mind totally be at ease, I feel. And it gets you to this Zen space. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that so much. You know, I read Leonardo uh, uh, da Vinci's um, biography thing uh, and, and he, he was total, I mean, that they call the Renaissance man. You know, he, he you know, he, he, the paintings we all know, but he'd spend lots of time trying to do ma based math equations in his notebook and, you know, and, it just it interested in all kinds of stuff. I think he wrote a play or something. There's, you know, it, it just the mind is curious about a lot of stuff, and and I think it's better when we you embrace that, you know, and and do going to the art store like you said and getting the resin and 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 messing with these mediums and 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 making some visual art is going to help your motivational speaking in a way that you might not see or might not be so clear cut, but it, it's just the, 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 the dots connect in your mind in really interesting ways and it's all interconnected, you know? So I, I, I definitely a fan of that. And I totally embrace that, you know, uh, I, I pushed it, you know, you know, we, we grew up with such a nine to five mentality and, and, and you know, my parents definitely had that too. So I, I struggle with times like, what am I, I like for the, my, a lot of my time, my twenties, I'm like, I'm just a guitar 
player, you know, <laughs> like I play in bands, you know, and like, yep. but then I'm like, but I, so I totally like amputated my movie side or my sports side or my, you know, all these sides of you. And, you know, I don't do that. Now, I, I, there's the guy, uh, Virgil, who, who uh, started, you know, off white. I saw this Instagram video. I think Gary Vaynerchuk posted it actually, where he, he was like, if I'm not doing your six projects, I'm not doing anything. And I'm like, I get it. Like, you know, it's like, uh, duh. Like, so I, I you know, I, I'm project based now. It's like, I am going to finish this screenplay. What goes on after that? Where, if it gets picked up, blah, 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 blah. I don't, it's just part of, that's for the universe to decide. That's not my yeah. work, that's the universe's work. So I'm just gonna finish the screenplay, okay? And then I have another project I'm doing after that. It's like probably a music project. I'm just gonna release a bunch of music that I had that I've been kind of sitting on. My buddy did some really amazing album art. So I'm gonna get that out the door. So it's project based, right? Now, of course, while I'm doing that, sure, I might be sending some emails, trying to get some people to read my screenplay, of course, you know what I mean? But like in terms of my, I have a certain amount of horsepower for art a day, and I'm gonna just I focus on one project at a time until it's done. That's the kind of way I'm doing. But but for it's uh, it's everything though. Like I'm curious about, you know, uh, all of it. You know, it's just because it's wherever the creativity. You got to follow the muse. I, I'm really big on inspiration. It, the inspiration and the muse. You know, um, yeah. it's, it, it's so you know. I, I think that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the coolest thing. You know. Mm -hmm. Going to the art store to get the two hundred dollars supplies is, is going to help you motivate while speaking. It's going to help your podcast. It's going to help your life. You know, it's just for sure. And it's at these points, like you said it so eloquently. I feel, especially at this time, over the past few years of the development of social media, we can definitely pigeonhole ourselves into saying, you know, I am this one thing. I mean, I've done it in the past thing. Oh, I'm a photographer, uh, but I wasn't going to share my other artwork or I wasn't going to share the side that, you know, I love connecting with people. And then you get to this point where you're like, okay, but this isn't just me. Like I've got five other sides of myself that I need to share. And if I just keep sharing this one thing, then it's not truly me at a hundred percent level and i feel like you hit this point of burnout of like should i still keep posting the same content or should i branch out should i allow myself to be like completely whole and visible on social media as this new brand like what's your take on it what i mean you said for you like from guitar and then you just like disconnected everything else no i love the question and i and i totally get what you're looking at and i think it is like a major issue today uh i think you gotta own, i think you gotta own it you gotta own yourself and you recognize that social media is a tool i think people put social media on a pedestal. i think people think like instagram is like god you know like they they it, it's in a weird freaking way like you gotta understand you gotta make it much it's not that precious like don't take it that like, you know, the identity funk, you know, thing in Instagram has just gone crazy and it's a little bit imbalanced. I think uh, just don't give a crap about Instagram so much, you know, like try that. Like, <laughs> so, you know, and I, I do it. So like post or then not post, like screw your schedule. You know what I mean? I mean, sure, 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 sure. If you're making bucks off it and it's like part of your, and like, then get a team. You know, if you're making bucks, then get a team. So you don't have to have it as a stress and burden. There's, you know, you can, you can do a load of content. They can all structure for you. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if you're, you're just a, 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 an upstart, like, I don't know, it, you know, to me, it's, more, it's the real life is much more important than Instagram. And it's important to be who, this, who you say you are and, and, and be about it, you know, and, 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 and be real. And then, you know, Instagram is just another thing out there in the world. Like, you know, like LA, like there's like, yeah. you, you know, e the email, you know, running into somebody at the dog park, you know, you might make a post and you know, you might connect to somebody, or you might some run into somebody at the dog park that like, you know, is, is, you know, you're part of your next step in your journey. So yeah, I think, uh, but when, in terms of your question specifically about posting stuff, yeah, I'm definitely like, so post what feels good and what is meaningful to you, you know? And like, you know, I, I used to wear these certain clothes, almost like, a, like, a, let's look at clothes and, and I used to wear, like, I just posted a picture on my Instagram with like a vest, a black vest, black pants, black boot, right? And I, I like this outfit. 
th- this used to be like my my like uniform like a nurse wears a uniform i used to wear that like every day because i was this like rocker dude and like but i realized like man sometimes i wear like wearing nikes sometimes i like wearing sweatpants sometimes i like wearing a suit you see what i'm saying like stop well, you know what i mean like i, I just so militaristic of like i'm gonna wear it if, you know what i mean yeah. so yeah, get weird like if i if you if it feels good to you that's the thing if it's really what you want to do right and uh i'm having more fun than i've ever had with instagram i used to be a little bit too like you know uh you know put it on a pedestal but now it's just like you know it's just a fun thing to play with and it's a kind of it's a, you treat it like a party you can like you can sta- you can go in and you can go out at any time you can talk to a bunch of people we met through instagram um so but yeah, like, don't, don't, I, I hate the pigeonhole. I hate the, like, you know, the, 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 you know, uh, yeah. The just like, I need to be this one thing or I don't only do this. It's like, it, it, if it's authentic to you and you're feeling it and you're really about it and you like it and you want to go with it, then go with it. You know, don't let Instagram dictate that process. Cause then that's backwards. That, that's <laughs> right. Thing. And then at that point, Instagram's using you instead of you using Instagram. And so you said it, use it as a tool, use it to your benefit. Like it's a place to share, but don't get into this trap of, you know, like staying in this box. And I love how you said that because you never know, like if you didn't post anything about screenwriting, then it may not have connected you with a producer or another production company or an investor that you needed to meet, you know? And, and the truth, to be honest, I don't post a lot about screenwriting because I, I'm like, I'm just right. Like I'm, I have a couple ideas of stuff and I'm just going through them and writing. I'm in like, I'm in my hard grind, right? Like, I think, you know, when I had three or four, I'll definitely be in a much more hard networking selling phase, but like I'm, you're seeing me in the thick of the just, like I'm in the, in the blacksmiths, like with the freaking sweat and the freaking steel sword, just like, you know what I mean? Like just going just, at just it, going at it, you know? So, you know, it's like, I don't really find it necessary. I post, I, I put on funny outfit or put on outfits that I think are like, you know, sometimes it's kind of funny. And sometimes I just outfits that I like that, like I'm, I, or t- I do photo shoots cause I like doing it. Or like just you know photo shoots, like mm-hmm. just going out with your friends and taking pictures, and uh, um, and like just having fun with that. I love the whole. So there is like a culture, right? I love the caption culture of Instagram. I love the like the swaggy like s- captures that people post, you know, where it's like, you know, like everybody's trying to post these cool captions, and I and I do like that. So I I've been flirting with that and playing with that a little bit, you know. It's just like you know, again, it's just it's just a tool and it's fun. I see it as like a game, you know. Now it's like. And I think it's helpful. I think people take Instagram very, very seriously in this because it's like almost a career and respect if that's your career. But like, you know, it, it's for me, it's just like, have fun with it. Take a little more lighter, be like fun and and do, you know, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, if you're posting pictures too, if you know what I mean? Like, right. I think for, for, for screenwriting, actually what I've used, there's an Instagram, uh, 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 a screenwriting LA thing on Instagram. It's like a group and there's a community and I use that to actually connect with a bunch of people. And I started connecting some other screenwriters in LA through that. So, you know, it, it's it's just like a party, man. Just treat it like a party. Like dunk in, do what you want, duck out when you want. You know, it's it's uh, that's the way I see it. Oh, I love it. It's a great place to collaborate. Like you said, we met through Instagram and I mean, have you ever thought, I mean, this is just an idea that came to mind because you were talking about captions on Instagram of treating your captions sort of like a screenplay in different parts. That's a great idea, actually. That's a cool idea. Like it doesn't have to be long or anything like that, but something that just keeps people going with it. You just, you just blew my mind. No, there's a, there's a, there's this, there's a musical artist. I, his name is a very weird name, but my buddy just showed me, showed me him yesterday. He has an album. It's all instrumentals and it's called How to Be Productive. And the first track is called Wake Up Early. The second track is like Eat Healthy. Third track is like Visualize. And all these tracks are like just instrumental kind of like jazz music, but the whole one, two, three, four, five, like walks you through a process. Ooh, I <laughs> love it. Cool. Right, so it just reminded me of what you're saying. It's like you can kind of, I could tell a story. That's a really cool idea, actually. That's a great idea, Bobby. Tell <laughs> Go a story with it. 
through, through, through Instagram. Yeah, that's a cool idea. I like it. I like it a lot. That's cool. Just keep like rolling with it. Like it's something somebody wants to come back and like continue to see. Oh my but, God, that's a great idea. No, because you know, what I love writing is because I love, I love cinema, like the classic cinema, like the theater, like, you know, an hour and a half and like the, that long form, but, but you could write a story in screenplay format because you're going to shoot it and you can shoot it on an iPhone for the Instagram and like roll it out through every day or something or, or yep. have some, that, that's a great idea I like it a or lot. even do it you know like piece by piece or even yeah. if it's just like text at first and then right. once you have it all put together then you'd show them like that what you made on your iPhone that's cool yeah that's cool that's really cool yeah I know I think there's a lot to do with it there's a lot of unexplored stuff with the captions, you know, and um, yeah, that's that's a great idea. I'm gonna think on that, Bobby. It's really, you're really smart. You go. <laughs> yeah, of course. Ideas coming out from everywhere. My mind like, thinks like so, so crazy. I was doing an, uh, I still do event marketing when it pops up and I was doing like the 10 hour drive one day from Texas to on my way up to Detroit, Michigan, a couple of weeks ago, and people are like, oh, uh, how is it gonna be? And I was like, oh, it's fine. Like, I've got 10 solid hours to just think on all sorts of things. Like, I have no clue what's gonna come up in my mind today. So those are the moments that we just sort of get out of our own head and see what happens. It's classic coffee shop stuff too. Like, you just, you know, it's like two people at a coffee shop just, just hang in and, and did you do that before COVID? Would you go to a coffee shop and just sit down, have a coffee, and meet a strike up a conversation with somebody you never met and yep. talk about it? Yeah, yeah, me too. So. I mean, I I am that person, and I will say it here, and it's going everywhere on social media and you know, podcasts, you name it. I am that person at coffee shops where I love to go by myself. Or I love to meet friends, but I know if I'm meeting friends, then I have to be a hundred percent in art conversation. So if you and I were having coffee and I knew you before, I know I have to be like hundred percent in this conversation, which is amazing. I enjoy that aspect, but I also love going by myself and just sitting there. Like I have my Moleskine notebook pen, like I start writing and I'm that person that sits up there and just people watches. And yeah. I'll eavesdrop just a little bit into conversation and find a way to segue into it. And I've yeah. met so many incredible people. I do the same thing if I'm out traveling solo and at a restaurant or, you know, sitting at the bar and you never know who you're going to meet. You never know what stories you're going to tell people who you think are just like going to walk into your life one day and they turn out to be like family, I've had that happen. Um, yeah, like I've met private pilots. I've met like people that got me into sailing in Santa Barbara. Like I'm from Indiana. Like I haven't grown up on the water, but sure, I've got a camera. Uh, send me out on a boat today, please. Like <laughs> that happens, you know? And like, I couldn't put two and two together beforehand. I love it. That's cool. I'm the same way. I think that's super groovy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, and that's how the world works. Like, we are meant to connect with each other. How has it been for you? And I know we're getting close on the, the hour mark, but um, how's it been for you with COVID and with the lockdowns in LA? being this person that loves to people watch and loving to connect with people, how has it made you feel? Oh, I mean, it's total disruption to like everything I like to do. I mean, I like writing at cafes. I like just cause for the, everything you talked about and stimulation and just seeing this, you know, I'm such an inspiration. Inspiration is everything for the creative process, in my opinion. Like, and, and you know, I talked about so some people are, like my homies and stuff in LA about this. They're like, oh, they think like, oh, I need to like have some traumatic like breakup with a loved one or something or whatever to like feel some crazy passion and write. <laughs> but inspiration could be just at a coffee shop noticing something somebody's wearing or like some like, you know, like there's this one coffee shop and I won't name the person, but she's this 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 woman. She's always like so graceful with the way she just like 
walks around and she does and she's it's like she's so light and like you know most people at the coffee shop are like freaking sweat and stress because it's like yeah you know, like they're doing busting out cappuccinos and i'm like how does she like have her hair like so kind of like perfect the whole day because it's like i know she's been here a couple of you know and like little things like that will just inspire and i'll just say hi thanks good to see how you're doing you know just whatever get my latte and leave i love i'm a five dollar latte guy all days i just wrap it i don't care i, I buy them all the time and, you know, I'm just little things like that will inspire the hell out of me. You know what I mean? I just, for some reason, it's just like, I don't know. It gets you just, you know, anything to get the juices flowing, man. So the COVID thing has interrupted everything, man. I used to go to the gyms a lot. I'm a huge yogi. I've been doing yogi for 10 years. I go to this one yoga studio. I was going every day. And so COVID, I literally was going every day and COVID shut down at the same time every day. Um, you know, I go to these, I have bars in LA that I love going to and just, you know, for every reasons you just described very beautifully about every, every you just, you, you hit the nail on the head on, on the experience. Uh, that experience is, is not, you know, there. So all that stuff, but you know, I, I, for not one day have I like had a pity party about it. I mean, it's just, is what it is. Something you got to deal with and I've adapted, but it definitely like, I mean, it's highlighted to me the, the need for social connectivity, you know? So I love this like zoom thing you're doing. I organized zoom meetings. Like I had one, I organized a zoom meeting with my high school football buddies. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, nice. You know, eight, yeah, eight of us got on Zoom and uh, just told stories. And man, we had a good old time. And uh, and then I met at one of them's in LA. And so we went out and had some more drinks even after that. And, you know, at one of the spots that was kind of open at, for a little bit. And, um, you know, it just, so yeah, a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of um, whatever you got to do. But yeah, I mean, I, I try, uh, you know, hey, I'm, you know, it's a rough time and, and the, every, the world's going through some serious stuff. And, um, but I, I, you know, to be honest, I can't wait for the bars and cafes and fucking yoga shops to open up because that, that was like part of my flow, man. That's like, you know, um, that's, uh, you know, yeah, all the reasons you, you hit the nail on the head, man. I, it's, it's definitely part of my daily thing, you know, so. Oh, I feel you. It's like, yeah at the height when I was in Texas and Houston, I was going stir crazy. And luckily, like we had space, like Texas, you could still get out and do more things, but still like I wasn't seeing people. And it got to the point that I was going on daily runs, even with the Texas heat, just so I could see the neighbors and like just wave and say hi. And then I would sit, if I would see them on their morning walk around the neighborhood, and then it got to the point where I was like meeting the neighbors, having coffee. I'm like, oh, I saw you five times, but I really need to know your name. Like, I just can't wave at you anymore. Uh, I totally feel you. Uh, but I will say this, like finding that thing that helps bring it back, even though if it's not a hundred percent. So for yeah. me, like you said, like the Zoom meetings, bringing this podcast to life, it's really, really helped. It's helped create a flow. It's helped conversations, things like that. And I'm definitely, when I look back, I'm like, I'm so grateful that I started this. Like yeah. it's helped transform it. Absolutely. I, I, I get it. I mean, it's like an adapt and overcome kind of situation. You got to friggin' And I, I feel you on the runs. I mean, I started running like a lot for like two that, and it's funny enough that I really wasn't before. I don't know what it was, but, uh, I, uh, you know, so you, I think we just need stimulation, right? We just need, we need, we need, and people are very stimulating, you know, because they're, they're like, these, these are the most powerful thing in the world up there. And they, they have a completely different one than yours, with different ideas, you know, even talking to you, there's plenty of ideas, like the whole Instagram fucking story ideas, <laughs> or the freaking movie that is right. right. So, yeah, it's like, it's just, this is like necessary, you know, I, you know, for me, this is uh, for art, art comes from, it's a group effort, whether you like it or not. Basquiat is, is revered, but Basquiat is definitely a product of his environment. Like I'll argue anybody about that. Like just New York, the scene from the street art to the people he's meeting, just the whole vibe and the flavor, everything created Basquiat. You know, he's the, the guy that did all the work, did all yep. the painting. He's the genius and he deserves all the credit he does. Every rapper that's really good has a bunch of people around him that are inspiration or something okay so that community that social that connection is how everything happens and we need each other you know so we're kind of like movies like the the, the do you remember, did you ever watch the walking dead no i'm actually to be honest you like i am awful with tv 
I'm awful yeah. with movies. That's, like that's I, yeah. I get, I get into some stuff, but like, honestly, my boyfriend's like, I am never watching TV with you because you fall asleep in two seconds or your mind's on something else. You're just, like, you're just such a people person. Like, you need people or it doesn't matter. Right. no people, I'm taking it out. So, Pretty much. Yeah. Um, no, that's, well, it's because in The Walking Dead, there's basically a zombie apocalypse. There's a couple humans. They're all spread out and they form little groups. And the interesting thing is when humans meet humans, they are skeptical that they're going to try to rob you, take each other's stuff because there's like no law and order or anything. But at the same um, time, they recognize that they need each other. And that's the metaphor to take away from The Walking Dead is like, we need each other. You know what I mean? So humans are the best thing for humans. Like, um, so yeah, no, I mean, that's, uh, I, I, you know, yeah, you could sit me up at a bar, a stool or at a cafe and I could have no problem talking to people for a long period of time. It really gets the juices flowing. It's a great, it's part of the creative process, you know. I agree. As we begin to wrap up here, Joe, one question that I always ask everybody here on the show, what has been one of the greatest blessings of this year for you? Greatest blessings of this year. I think one definitely I have to give is I got a dog this year. Ooh, um, it's exciting. What type? At three months old, uh, I got a Great Dane. She's a nice. all, all black Great Dane. Uh, taught, she's taught me a lot. Um, that has been really good. And then um, greatest blessings. Or just blessings in general. It doesn't have right, to be right. like it's top of the list. Right. No, no, no. It's good. I like, I like thinking about it. Um, I think, yeah, I think, you know, it really focused this year's made. I mean, this year's really made. I think there's a lot of people would probably share this is made your focus on looking at what you have and what, not what you don't have. You know what I mean? I think, you know, we're talking about all the stuff, the stuff we're missing out on. I've been, I think I've been blessed to not get too wrapped up on what I'm missing out on because that first month when COVID hit and I was go, I was losing, like, cause I really wanted to lose all this weight and get in great shape. And I did lose a bunch of weight. And, uh, but you know, cause the yoga studio, when the yoga studio closed down, that was like my church. That was like my mental health. Like mm -hmm. I cleared out my whole system cause the spine and the stretching, the sweating, and yeah, I could do yoga on my own, but like when you're in a room with like 50 people and it's hot and like there's very focused, it's, it just really is a lot easier to really, really sink in and get a deep practice. And I was pissed. I was really pissed that like it just this whole thing had thrown everything, all my plans and everything I was doing off. I think one of the biggest blessings in this year is just letting go of all the shit you can't control and focusing on what you do have. You know, I have a dope apartment. I have a dope dog. I have a dope girlfriend. I'm healthy, you know what I mean. I got no. beer in the, I got beer in the fridge. I got my computer. So I'm, I, what am I gonna complain about? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I, I'm writing. I'm making. I'm productive. Um, I'm, you know, everything. Like focusing on what the biggest blessing this year is. This whole situation has made me focus on what I do have, not what I don't have. And I, I'm happier when I focus on what I do have, and it just leads to better stuff. You know, oh, I just like. I love it, and then it's yeah. so true. Like when we focus on what we have and not what we're missing out on, that control aspect, that comparison aspect, it just makes our minds in a better place and happiness and joyfulness, I find is easier to come by. Absolutely, I think so too, yeah. It's Drew, where can we find more of you? Like where websites, social media handles, you name it. Absolutely. I'm on Instagram at Drew Southern. Uh, I'm on Spotify, Drew Southern, all my music's up there. Um, I have a website, DrewSouthern.com, but it's down right now. I'm retooling it because I'm going to have all my, the films I've done, all the music I've done. It's going to have like everything. So it's really excited about that because it's just like going to be a one-stop shop where you can see all these cool projects. But YouTube, I have like one of the, I was one of the first people with YouTube partnerships. So I have to just dot, Drew Southern, like YouTube.com backslash Drew Southern or whatever. So you can find me on YouTube um, with a bunch of the shorts and music videos and random little things and my bands and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, Instagram, Drew Southern, Spotify, Drew Southern, YouTube, Drew Southern, Facebook, Drew Southern. 
So I don't know, just Google Drew Southern if I can Whatever you, if you like music or movies, I don't know. There's a bunch You'll of You'll find so. Drew. And I'll make You'll sure find, find <laughs> um, I'll make sure to tag Drew and all of the posts and the content and the show notes here on Apple and Spotify as well. Drew, thank you so much for coming on today, sharing your knowledge, just diving deep into screenwriting and creativity and life in general. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bobby. I love what you're doing. I love your podcast and thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Awesome. Wonderful. Guys, for everybody who's watching today, I hope this inspires you to get out there, do something creative, do something out of the norm, meet a stranger, even if it's online, say hi to your neighbor, do something today that makes you smile. Have an amazing today day. Again, this is Coffee with Bobby with Drew Southern. Enjoy, guys. Bye. Bye.